Hello and welcome to the Auto Trader pregame show. Players only as we take a look at Russell Westbrook making his entrance as he gets ready to host one of the very best, Dame Lillard and the Trailblazers starting to play some good basketball. We should have a good one here. Greg Anthony sitting in from a man, C. Webb, who was working hard last night along with the Hall of Famers, Isaiah Thomas and Kevin McHale. So we're going to have a lot of fun, but let's get it out on location first to Dennis Scott and get caught up to what's going on in Oklahoma City as we get ready for this battle. Deasy? Well, guys, first of all, it's a little chilly here in OKC. I don't know what the weather is. Back it's cold Atlanta. here, too. It's yeah, cold Atlanta's there, too? Cold. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, with that being said, hopefully the cold weather stays outside the arena because OKC Thunder is playing better defense that slipped a little bit. Paul George playing at an MVP level. And you talked about Dame Little and C.J. McCollum. Now we have to talk about Nurkic. He's playing better basketball. He's just talking to some of the guys as they're warming up. Nurkic is tired of people saying who's the third guy for Portland. So it should be a good ball game tonight. It, it really should. And, and, you know, you look at this Thunder team, all the talk coming in was how great they'd been defensively. But that's not been the case here uh, of late for this group, DZ. What's the thought process with how they're playing on that side of the ball? Well, they understand that teams have come into their building and shot the ball with confidence. And the first team that comes to mind the other night when the Los Angeles Lakers came in here and played lights out basketball with Kyle Kuzma shooting the three and getting anywhere on the floor like he wanted to. So they realize teams are going to come in and give them their best shot. They need to regroup. Guys off the bench understand when they come in, they got to lock down and play good team defense. But no panic. I say it again, no panic because a guy named Paul George is playing really, really good. You know, 3D, they're they going up against a, a, a great backcourt tonight uh, when you when you talk about uh, Lillard and, and McCollum. What strategy do you think they will implement tonight defensively to try to slow those two guys down? Well, try to keep them off the three-point line, and when they split the double team, Isaiah, you know this, you're one of the best to ever do it. When they split that double team, make sure those big guys step up in the lane like Kevin McHale used to do, and not so much block the shot, but deter the shot and try to get some of those shooting percentages to come down because we know you're not going to stop them all night long. We just want them to work for every shot they get tonight. You know, Dennis, what I want you to do is go tell Adams that Nurkic wants to have a big game tonight because I want to see <laughs> what Adams does to him. Uh, I, look at, uh, I look at OKC, and I think Adams just really, when he's playing well, he's defensive rebounding, he's offensive rebounding, but he's really clogging the paint and just helping recover. Talk to me a little bit about Adams and Adams' ability to really help that um, OKC defense. Well, I think Paul George has done an excellent job, guys, believe it or not. Throwing the ball down low to, to your point, K Mac, to Steven Adams. Just let him touch it. He doesn't always try to shoot the basketball because he's a great passer out of the mid post. So sometimes let the big guy eat a little bit. He sets better screens. He defends more for you. And now you can get out and run and get easy baskets. So, 3D, is, there, is it raining out there? Is it snowing? Because we just saw a shot of Adams walking in. Yeah. He looked like the Obama. Well, yeah, it was raining. Yes. Yes. was that guy? It was, it was raining earlier. It stopped raining, but man, I cannot lie. I didn't bring my big coat. I yeah. bought my southern coat. I'm hey, chilly. Hey. You, you, you can get up Hold under on. his coat. Hold on. That's the, kind, that's the kind of guy when you're walking down the street, you see him coming, you go to the other yeah, side of the street. Like, you go take off running. You go, who is that guy? <laughs> All right, uh, DJ, we're going to check back in with you a little bit later. Let, let's talk a little bit more, guys, yeah, about yeah. this Thunder team because – you know, when the season started, they probably had as many question marks as anybody after how the season ended a season ago. But defensively, they were a juggernaut for quite a while. But then now it seems like they've hit a stretch where defense has not been their calling card. Do you see them returning to that? And also, do you guys see them as a legit contender in that Western Conference? You, you know, I, I was one of the guys early in, in, in preseason. I wasn't sure if, if OKC in thinking that the West would be as tough as it is. With Russell missing games, with Westbrook missing games early in the season, I didn't know if they would fall so far behind that they wouldn't be able to make up the, 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 the games. However, you know, they, you got to give Billy Donovan a lot of credit because he and Paul George and that group, they did a great job of, of holding down the fort. And when Russ came back, they just took off. So, you know, I, I, I like where they are defensively, and I think there's so much room to grow and improve for the OKC Thunder. Yeah, I tell you what, when they're playing good defense, 
they're switching to deny the passes. When they're not playing good defense, they're laying back off it. And, you know, we get a switch down here. You know how hard it is when guys can fly and not switches. You're up tight. You're denying. You're getting mm-hmm. handed. They get deflections. They get steals when they're doing that. What I've seen lately a little bit is they've been a little bit more passive on the defensive end, allowing those passes to flow freely on the perimeter. I just think when they're up pressuring, they're a much better team. So we'll see tonight if they get back to pressure, how many deflections, how many steals. And the reason that I'm believing in this team you ask, you know, where can they go in the playoff? When you can score off your defense, that gives you such a big bounce, especially in the playoffs when, yep. when scoring becomes at a premium. When you can get four or five of those deflections for runouts and get yourself 12, 14, 15 points off those, off those deflections and steals, that's huge. And so I'm believing in this team. I favorite thing about, you know, the OKC lately is that Russell Westbrook is not pressing his offense. He's not having those six for 30 games. He was six for 12 last night. Yeah. Damn near had a triple double, had yeah. 10, 10 rebounds, nine assists. And when you can control the game by taking 12 shots, yep. Yep. you are a basketball player. You're yeah. not a numbers correct. Yeah. Come and there. and that, that used to always be the be the judge of, of if your point guard is is really controlling the game by, you know, how many shot attempts he has to take or doesn't take. And the average was about if you can take if you took 12 to 15 shots a night and you can control the game that way and you have your imprint on the assist box, you're sharing the basketball, that's when you knew you were doing, you know, a great job. And then guys like Magic would come along and they control the game with four shots. Yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you would be like, hey, hey, we're not, we're not, we're not even talking about you tonight, exactly. Magic. You know, yep. you're in a totally different category. But but that's what Westbrook is doing. And not only that, he's all he's also accepted the challenge of becoming a better defender. Mm-hmm. This is the first time I've ever heard him really talk about becoming an, an, an elite defender yes. as opposed to being an elite offensive player. And when you have he and Paul George as two elite defenders on your team, you got a chance to beat anybody. And, you know, wrapping up on Westbrook, he's not getting those three or four extra layups he got a game. Because, you know, your shooting percentage looks a hell of a lot better when you're yeah. beating everybody and you're getting four or five, six layups at the rim. He's not, he's not getting those right now. I, mean, I, I don't know if he's just – doesn't quite have the explosiveness he had or whatever. You know, he's such a freakish athlete. But he's just not getting those shots. And so those always make your shooting percentage look a hell, yeah. a hell of a lot better. And, and do you guys think, though, big picture, this is a team that doesn't shoot the three well, although they were terrific in their last game, shot 52% from beyond May 15. But along with Westbrook and this group, do they shoot it well enough, though, to, to where they can really put some fear in some of those elite teams in that Western Conference once we get to the postseason? If the right people are shooting, if Abrinas can come back and get healthy, he's a good shooter for him. Paul George makes his share of threes, you know, shoots a decent percentage from the three-point line. I'd like to see them add another shooter. Mm-hmm. But again, you know, it, it, to me, the three, it's all relative to who's shooting. If you have 20% shooters shooting a lot of threes, you're going to be a lousy <laughs> three-point shooting team. I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot of math to figure that out. And sometimes they have the wrong people shooting the threes. Yeah. If they have the right people shooting the threes, put them in the right position, you got some drive, you got some kick going out, yeah, I'd like to see them add another shooter. I really would. You know, I think it just fills out their roster. But, again, you know, I, I, we talked about it a couple weeks ago. San Antonio has the right people shooting threes. And they don't shoot a bunch of them, but they make a bunch of them. Yeah. They make a high percentage of what they shoot. I think OKC's got to have a little bit of some, some of that. That being said, I'd like to see them uh, trade for a shooter if they could. I, I agree with Kevin. I, I do think that at some point in time uh, during, this, during this period, they have to seek out a three-point shooter to add to the roster. But that shooter's got to be able to defend also. Yes. He just can't be a guy that's a, a specialist that knocks down shots. He's got to be able to defend on both ends so they can play him and keep him in the game. Yep. And I also think that shot selection is extremely important. And what I'm seeing with OKC right now is their shot selection has become much better. Mm. Uh, and if they continue to have good shot selection, then they'll be okay. Okay. And speaking of selection, I'm going to select this moment to give a shout out to my kids. My daughter, Naomi, and my son, Tyson, are watching hey, the big hey, fans. What's and up, also kids? interact with all of us here. Socially on at NBA TV, Not myself me. at Ray Anthony 50, I, at Isaiah Thomas, and at Kevin McHale. Just try it. Some, you never know. Somebody probably has that account you, right now. The problem is it's that actor, and they keep on mistaking me for some four foot eleven inch actor. And I'm like, that is not me. I promise you. I'm 6'11. 
us. All right. <laughs> you you get mistaken for the actor. I get mistaken for the for the younger Isaiah that's right. in the league. I, right I always now. say you, the real Isaiah Thomas <laughs> when I talk about well, you. That's the real. The that's the real game. Dame Lillard right there. And oh, yeah, he might have one. a little something to say about how this game goes tonight. Dame Lillard and the Blazers. Wearing slippers. They are lurking. Only one. Those up for the show. It's an NBA TV players only night tonight. Blazers, Thunder, 8 o'clock Eastern to let us know what's going on in OKC. It's the grill daddy himself. See those grill marks? Uh. 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 3D! Yeah! Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, you always <laughs> feel your intro, but today you're really feeling it. I love it. it. <laughs> yeah. I'm really feeling it because I need the grill mark because it's so cold in the PC today. <laughs> <laughs> we'll warm you up here, 3D. Uh, Carmelo Anthony officially been traded to the Chicago Bulls. There's some rumored teams that might grab him when he inevitably gets waived. The Heat. The Blazers, potentially, along with the Los Angeles Lakers. It's Blazers Thunder tonight. So let me know, how does the fit, do you think, work with the Portland Trail Blazers? Believe it or not, guys, I do like the Blazers more so the Heat. Why? Because I think the Blazers are a third person. I know Nurkic has gotten better and playing better basketball this year, but we know Carmelo Anthony is a proven scorer. So it takes so much pressure off of CJ and Dame Lillard. We know they go one-on-one -on -one a lot. We know the assists have gotten better the last few games. When you get into the playoffs, you need to throw the ball to somebody and go get you a bucket. We know Carmelo Anthony can do that. So of all the teams that you're throwing out there, I kind of like the Blazers. Interesting. Speaking of those assists with the Portland Trail Blazers, they've been moving the ball the last couple games. 30-plus assists in consecutive games for the first time in over a decade, which is nuts. Are they making an effort, a concerted effort, to pass the ball in Portland right now? Key word, guys, is effort. They are making the effort. But when you make that effort, you have to start believing. I think guys are starting to make some shots. Other guys coming off the bench, uh, getting to the basket, knocking down wide open threes. So it will take some pressure off of C.J. and Dame. But until those guys make shots consistently, until Nurkic, like I talked about earlier, until he starts playing consistent basketball, we know he's a walking double-double. That's what ke keeps the effort going, and you start believing in your teammates. On the other side, the Thunder have won a couple in a row. But January has been an uneven month for them. They've been poor defensively after starting the season so hot. They were the number one team in defense for a long time. Is there anything that you can use to, to explain what the heck is going on with their defense? Not, not really one thing versus the other. I mean, a few opponents came through their home court and scored, shot the ball, basketball very well. Uh, and man, thinking of the Lakers off the top of my head. So there are certain teams that just came into their building, played well, and you go on the road. And then when you don't shoot the ball on the road, we know Russell Westbrook hadn't shot the ball particularly well. Things like that can haunt you on your uh, total team defense. But when you have a guy like Paul George playing on the MVP level, they're still winning ball games. All right, we appreciate it, 3D. We'll see you tonight. Keep warm down there, would you? Ooh, man, ooh. <laughs> Chilly here, man. We got to get you a grill so when you're doing your hits, yeah. stay warm. Yeah, we need oh, a portable oh, grill. Oh, oh. Ooh. <laughs> Thanks, All right, when we come back. This segment sponsored by the Green Egg. Yeah, we're going to... Put an order in right now. We'll get that out to 3D. When we come back, a supersized edition of Weekend Whoopsies.